<clears throat> so here I am back again. I'm going to do another um, little musing about a couple of my records. Um, so I stuck to the plot of just picking at random, uh, you know, from the front of the stacks of records there. And um, what we've landed on tonight is, uh, well, I'm trying to leave the glasses off because it's a terrible, terrible reflection there, isn't there? You can't, you know, look, I don't know about you, but it irritates me anyway. So tonight, the first one to come up is, I uh, know, I don't think people are going to recognise that. Uh, not a lot of people are going to recognise that album, so it's very cool, you know. If you do, you're a bit of a music head. Yeah. You know. It's Tumberlane. Oh, Tumberlane um, was, of course, the guitarist, or one of the two guitarists in the great seminal New York New Wave band television. A very unusual New Wave band they were, too, insofar as they were quite, quite virtuoso in their playing. And, you know, they didn't, like, they were almost like an anti Ramones. In their own way, but they were another one of those CBGB club bands, and along with the Ramones and Blondie, and others I'm not thinking of. The New York Dolls, of course. I suppose the New York Dolls kind of <clears throat> started that scene in a way. First punk band, a lot of people say. So, uh, yeah, cover. Um, well, you know, I mean, it's very hard to talk about Tom Berlain without talking about television and Marquee Moon and all that. Marquee Moon is unbelievable. Now Verlaine, of course, his voice is jarring to say the least, and I can understand that somebody might listen to the first minute or thirty seconds of uh, Marty Moon, or indeed this album cover. It's called. It's from nineteen eighty four, but they might you might listen to the first half minute of it and say no 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 that's not for me. And uh, I could kind of sympathise with that view, you know, because it's like. You know, I never developed a taste for coffee. So, you know, some people don't develop a taste for the voice of Tom Waits or Bob Dylan or, you know, Tom Berlin. So, you know, I don't have any problem if somebody says, no, 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 I, I, I can't go for that. No, no can do. Uh, but Marky Moon is just an amazing album. It's, it is, it, like, you know, it's always up there on those critics' greatest albums lists. And, um, uh, for good reason, it really is uh, an amazing album. So, a cover for this album, I probably picked it up um, as a cut price deal, you know, just took a chance on it. Uh, let me see now, when did I get this? I have a date in here. Bought it in Dublin in 1987 on January the 21st. I have no, rec <laughs> no recollection of, the, of that occasion, and usually I would know. Um, I would have some idea of you know what was going on when I got a particular record. This one I just picked it up, and uh, yes, it's very very good. I've thrown up one track. I think I might have thrown up two tracks from it onto YouTube because they weren't up there. Five Miles of You, it's a great song, and Oh Foolish Heart is a really good song. Um, it's a bit like Dylan's. Uh, what's that song on Shot of Love, of Foolish Heart or something like that. It's a really lovely song. But anyway, this is really good too. So, uh, yeah, the thing about Tom Verlaine uh, that I find, now I'm not a flipping musicologist by, <laughs> by any means. Well, I tell you, it's, you know, my analysis, for want of a better word, of Tom Verlaine's guitar playing is that he was unique insofar as his guitar playing as a rock guitarist has no reference point back to Chuck Berry and Muddy Waters and Robert Johnson. You know what I mean? That lineage of rock music guitar playing. His guitar playing is completely different, you know. Um, and, I, you know, I don't know anything about uh, scales and, you know, I don't have any academic knowledge of music whatsoever. But that's what I detected in his playing, and I've never read about it. I must look it up, actually. And um, I think he must have listened to Richard Thompson 
Richard Thompson's playing is similarly not rooted in rock and roll, even though Thompson is a fantastic rock and roll guitar player. But he's, uh, for, if you don't know, Richard Thompson was the guitarist best known as a guitar player for Fairport Convention. But sure, I mean, his career since Fairport Convention is 50 years and, <laughs> and going. And uh, yeah, similar, like, like Thompson's guitar playing was very much from his folk background. And Berlin, I think, must have really listened to Thompson. Anyway, that's my analysis. Oh yeah, and I like the way this links through for me because, you know, I love Richard Thompson. So Richard Thompson to Tom Berlin and my favourite band for the last 20 years has been Wilco and their guitarist is Nils Klein and there's something about Nils Klein that would always make me think of Tom Berlin's playing as well. Anyway, that's all of it. I follow We'll have less of that now. We'll go, back, we'll go on to the next. So that's Tom Berlin's cover. Now, even though I do like this album, I would suggest, if you don't know it already, go for Marquee Moon. You'll always pick that up cheap, or you can check it out on Spotify or whatever as well, of course. Well, I'm six minutes in. I don't want to be going on too long. So let's go on to the next album. <sighs> okay, this is an album that's very much of its time. Simple Minds, New Gold Dream. New Gold Dream, 81, 82, 83, 84. They were a very exciting band when they came along. You know, they're in the same kind of arena as you two, of course, at the time. This was a 1982 album, wasn't it? Made in summer 82. Great tracks on it, like, you know, there was a few good singles there. What the? Can't read it. Someone Somewhere in Summertime. Promised You a Miracle. Glittering Prize. Those would be the kind of the singles that they took off it, and they were all pretty pretty popular. Southern Live in Galway um, in 84, I'd say. Fantastic live show. Now, like a lot of people, they kind of wearied of them after a while, and Jim Carr kind of was a little bit pompous, maybe, in his manner uh, on stage. He's probably a lovely guy, I don't know. But um, that kind of overwrought, epic -y kind of thing came and went. It was very exciting for a while, and then it became very kind of uh, cliche very quickly somehow. I don't know, like U2, I, I would say that of U2, but U2, in fairness to them, after the Joshua Tree, they really took their careers in their hands and went off in a new direction, and they, they deserve kudos for that. Uh, Simple Minds, on the other hand, I don't know what happened with them. I mean, after New Gold Dream, the next album was good, yeah, uh, Sparkle in the Rain with Up on the Catwalk and that song that was in the film that was huge. Anyway, myself and a bunch of friends, it was kind of like a an end of era thing when we went to see Simple Minds in Galway. A bunch of us who had been at school together or used to go to gigs together. Um, it was like we were, all coming, we were all coming to the end of our kind of college days and it was a feeling like we were all going to be going in our separate directions and indeed we did it was possibly the last time that group of people were all gathered together but we had a lovely uh, time i was living in Galway at the time i was sharing um, a flat which was actually a, a demobilized mobile home out the back of a garden down on the clatter it was really lovely actually except for when it rained because there was fucking leaks all over the place Pardon the bad language there. Um, yeah, but uh, yeah, they all came out to the to the flat and we had the dinner. I remember one person who was a notorious complainer, saying that the peas were on the wrong side of her place. <laughs> uh, yeah. Anyway, uh, the gig was fantastic, and a really good Northern Ireland band called Silent Running played support that night. So New Gold Dream. I don't know, it's of its era, isn't it? But it still sounds very good. I have listened to it not long ago, and I did enjoy listening to it. But you'd probably have to have been there, you know? I don't know if a young person hearing that now would, would go for it, whereas they would go for, or might go for, Marquis Moon and Tom Berlain, and that's a Tom Berlain album cover. All right, uh, so we're just coming up in 10 minutes. That's more reasonable, and um, I'll talk to you again. All right, take care.